welcome to Applied Regression Analysis. My name is Clark Gaylord. I'll be your instructor throughout this course. Today we're going to start off by looking at the graphical tool of scatter plots. We've probably seen scatter plots before. We may have used them in other contexts. It's a good way for us to get the ball rolling with this course and introduce the computational tools that we're going to use throughout the class. Microsoft Excel, most of us have used it. Straightforward. Uh, Open Office, if you don't have access to Excel, also a fine tool to use. Jump is another graphical environment for doing statistics. has very sophisticated tools, very sophisticated analyses. It does have a scripting language in it as well. has a lot of flexibility. The open source software R implementation of the S language will be another tool that we use, especially in the R Studio environments. We do have a graphical editor environment and we'll see how to use that in this context. Now draw your attention to something you probably haven't used as much, and that's GNU plot. GNU plot makes very high quality plots and uh, graphs, so it's often useful for doing that. It's not a data analysis environment in general sense, like R and Jump R, but where Excel is simplistic in general purpose for what it does, GNU plot is very specialized at what it does. Now, if you've got access to MATLAB and Minitab, those are also excellent choices for doing some of the work in this course. I'm not going to focus on those for the work that we do throughout the course, but if there's times where you want to use those and you can do something unless it's specifically intended to be an assignment where we're working in one of these other environments, then those are also available to you. So to start off with for scatter plots, we're going to look at one of the first analyses in science that used scatter plot. James Forbes is a physicist in the mid-19th century, and he wanted an inexpensive way to estimate atmospheric pressure. Barometers are relatively expensive instruments, especially in the 1850s, but the boiling point of water is relatively easy to measure. So he went to different points throughout the Alps and did this experiment, of measuring with his barometer the atmospheric pressure and measuring the boiling point of water in order to get that relationship. And then he felt that by establishing that relationship, he could then use the boiling point of water as a proxy for atmospheric pressure. So we're going to use this data set as our example throughout the uh, lecture today. One little technical nit, you'll notice that between these fields there's only a single character that looks like a few spaces. That's a tab character. That becomes significant when we're importing it into our different tools. And you'll see how that comes about. So in particular, in Excel, we go to our data file, and Excel immediately says, well, this is a text file. Is it delimited, or are they in fixed columns? And we say, yeah, it is delimited. And by default, it says, well, I'm expecting tab delimited. That's exactly what we have. That's the best way to have text data going into Excel, especially in many tools. That's going to be true. So there it is. It looks just like the text file that we had. And in Excel, we just can highlight the fields. And notice I've included the header field there. It'll use that for the uh, identifying the axes. And then we insert a scatter plot. And it comes out thus. Now, in this case, we don't necessarily need to force the zero on this axis. So we can just right click, format that axis, and say, you know, let's start that axis at 20 instead of zero. And likewise, we can change our title if we want to. Numerous other things we can do to annotate this graph. Simple and sweet. So that's Excel. Next, let's take a look at Jump. Now similarly, Jump can open a text file. So we go to where our data are and open it. And it recognizes that it's a file it can open. Now it doesn't have it as a data set yet, it just has it in a little text editor that it runs itself. You say import as data and it will bring it into a jump data set. But notice it didn't do the right thing with our labels there because it read that first line as the line that labels were on. So it doesn't even know these are numbers because that first line or text, it actually interprets this as the text 194.3 instead of as 194 and 3 tenths. The reason for that is because it assumes that the first line has the labels of the columns and then 
the data come after that. So let's just take that line out. And then we import as data. That looks much better. So we have our boiling point and we have our pressure. We analyze a fit of y by x. Our y variable, our dependent variable, is pressure. Our boiling point is this. Now you may think boiling point is a function of pressure, and from a physics perspective that's true, but remember what Forbes wanted to do was model pressure as a function of boiling point. So in his case, he thinks of boiling point as the independent variable. And there we are, nice bivariate fit. Now, in Excel, that was pretty much all we could do. You could fit the line, and, and that's really it. But you can't get any additional statistics out of it. We'll see later in the course how in Jump, from this point, we can get much more statistical knowledge about what's going on with this model and get estimates of variability and things of that nature. But today we're focusing on getting the data in, looking at the scatter plot. Our next tool is R. R is open source. Lots and lots of documentation examples on the internet of how to use it. So here, once again, we want to read the data, but you know, this is R, so we have to do it from the command line. Know how to use your tab completion in this. And I'm already in the right directory. So there's what the data look like. Once again, it does the same thing. It, th it interpreted that first line of the file as the header well, that's not what I want to do. How do I make it skip over that in R? Well, in R, this function has a skip. Ah, there we go. Now we can see that the boiling point and the pressure are two different columns, but I still don't have anything to plot because I have to store this into an, R, into an object. But that's okay. I can just say, say, pressure equals and there's my object. But now I can actually use that in my plot function. So I want to plot pressure and you put a dollar between the object name and the field name and that allows you to specify that. Now there's a couple of different ways to specify the axes in your plot function. The one I like the most is where you specify the dependent variable first and then you use a tilde between that and the independent variable. It's called the model representation. We use that in many different other places in R for when we're doing a regression analysis, so it's a handy way of referring to it. We can also have x comma y, so the independent variable comma the dependent variable, but we're going to do dependent variable tilde um, independent variable. As you, as you use R, you'll get familiar with some of these nuances. So again, our pressure is the dependent variable and there we have it again. Once again we don't have much in the way of our um, nice pretty labels there but it's easy enough to specify those on the plot command thusly. So we can specify the main title and the labels of the axes and then we have a much prettier display. And likewise, we could annotate this with lines and things like that, just as we uh, could in Jump. And we'll get to that in a subsequent lecture. So again, this is not particularly difficult. And all of these commands are built into R, and the documentation for them is built in as well. So you've got everything right here. If you don't have access to the internet or just want to look up something quickly before you go searching the internet for how to use it. There are also numerous excellent books on using R. Okay, so those are really the analytical tools. Now as a special treat, we're going to look at GNU plot. Now GNU plot is very much a classic command line tool. And we see that we've got where I am. I've got a directory down there that has my data in it. And I've got the wrong expression there. Okay. Once again, R is con or GNU plot is confused by those extraneous data there. It also has a skip. And now we have to skip forward two lines to get to it. And there we go. So we've got we skip past the text to just reading the numbers and it plots those two numbers. 
and it's the first one is the x and the second one is the y. You can actually flip those around with other command line arguments on the plot command. But there again, it doesn't have nice pretty labels. It's got a key up here that's sort of obscure. But in GNU plot, you specify with set commands for your plot. And now we plot it again and we have a title there. Not a very nice font, but at least we have a label. Let's get the rest of those in here. And once again, in fact, we can just say replot, and it'll replot it again. Now to get our fonts, that looks better. Now we just want to get rid of that key there. And there we are. We can add this output to a, um, a PDF file if you want to. That's true in all the other cases too. Uh, Jump and R and GNU plot and even Excel have the ability to do some exports. A little bit harder in some and easier in others. And we'll go through that throughout the semester. Now we've gone through those four tools and we have access to the data and we plot it. Now one difference between GNU plot and the others where Excel, Jump, and R all read data into a structure that was internal to the program. In GNU plot, it actually read the data file fresh each time. That may have some limits in terms of scalability, but it may have some advantages from time to time as well. Something you want to keep in mind.